in Isaiah chapter 58, God tells Isaiah to cry aloud, spare not, and to lift up his voice as a trumpet and to show his people their sin. And in uh, this day, in this day, there's uh, a time for the watchmen to call the people of God to turn away from their wickedness and to turn back to God. God desires a people for himself. He's, he's called us. He's saved us so that we would be a peculiar people, a people that, that are set aside for his glory, that live our lives for, for him, hallelujah, and not for the pursuits of, of the, the world. Um, last night, as I was preparing to go to sleep, the Lord um, put this on my heart, and so I had to post it. I said, I don't know a whole lot, but one thing I am sure of, in my 37 years of walking with the Lord, I've learned that he prefers the intercessory repentant prayer for mercy like Daniel prayed on behalf of his people in Daniel 9, 4 through 19. And then he does the prayer of James and John to bring judgment on those who rejected Jesus in Luke 9, 54 and 55. I believe it's the heart of God not to pour out his wrath or his judgment on the land. I believe it's the heart of God to use situations to get his people's attention so that they'll come to the place where they'll repent and turn to him and be his people. And I believe that's where we are at today. I, I, post, I, I uh, made a video not too long ago about how I believe that that we weren't in the judgment of God. Uh, God says in in uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, he's I mean seven thirteen, he says if I send forth um, locusts, and if I cause it not to rain, so that there be famine upon the or drought upon the land, and and if I bring the pestilence to the land. He says, basically, he's saying, I'm going to do that to get your attention. And then when I do that, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear their voice from heaven, forgive them their sin and heal their land. It's God's desire not to destroy the land, but to heal the land. Because Israel had sinned so bad against God, turned to idolatry and all kinds of things, he, he gave the land rest for 70 years. He took Israel away and, and, he, um, and, and he brought them into captivity and he gave the land that was, had been given to them rest so that they could return as a repentant people, as a people who loved the Lord God and, reserved, and were reserved for him. Hallelujah. That was God's whole purpose. You see, God does chastise his people. He chastises those who wander away from him, so that, not so that he could send them to hell, not so that he could rain down judgment upon them, but so that they would come to their senses like the prodigal son and realize that they had it better in their father's house than where they're at right now. And I believe that God is, is, is knocking at our door to our hearts and, and he's saying, if you hear me, just open the door. Just open the door and come back. You might say, well, I go to church. I, 
I'm a Christian. I pay my tithes. I, I'm a member. I, I'm, I'm faithful to attend church. But that's not what God's looking for. God's looking for a person that, that will do his will, that will, that will submit to his will, whatever that is, whatever that looks like. You know, the Word of God says, says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I mean 13, it says, if I have tongues of men and angels and I don't have love, it's just a bunch of noise. If I prophesy and if I have all knowledge and, and uh, if I give my, my body to be burned, if I give all my material possessions to the poor, but if I don't have love, it's nothing. You see, there's a lot of religious things people can do because it's what religious people are supposed to be doing. But if it's not with the compassion and the mercy of God that's compelling them to do that, hallelujah, then it's really being done for nothing. And that's where I believe the church is at today. I believe the church is doing a lot of things but they don't have compassion. You see, they do a lot of things and then they, they, they feed the homeless, they, they uh, go out and preach on the streets, they um, uh, have outreaches, they go on mission trips, whatever. And then they, they come back home and they watch all the YouTube videos about the end of the world and how God's gonna judge this wicked world. It's not God's heart. In Ezekiel chapter 33, God says, I don't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. He says, what I want is that the wicked will turn from his way and live. Turn you, turn you from your evil ways, for why will you die? O house of Israel, O Christian church. He's saying, turn from your wicked ways. He says, he says, if the righteousness of the righteous will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sins. Now that might not sound fair, but God wants your heart. You know, I, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart. That means without hypocrisy. That means not being about going to church on Sunday and then living like the world the rest of the time. God wants your heart, hallelujah. <laughs> In Ezekiel um, chapter 14, we see that, that God gives a message and, and he says, to his people in 14.6, he says, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. You see, Israel at that time had been caught up in idolatry, in the ways of, of, of the heathen around them. They had turned away from God. They had a form of godliness, but they denied God just by their actions, by the things that they did, the, the way that they lived. It's kind of like today. I meet all kinds of people who say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, go to church to be with all those hypocrites. And if we didn't, you know what? Sometimes it's just an excuse. But the truth is, if... If, the, if people weren't acting like hypocrites, then people wouldn't have an accusation. And God says, Thus saith the Lord, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all of your abominations. Stop it. Stop it. Repent. <laughs> 7 through 10 warns against an idolater who has turned away from the Lord, but still goes to a prophet to hear what the Lord is saying. Kind of like people who, oh, uh, well, okay, well, I'm not right with the Lord, but I want to hear what this prophet says about the end of the world um, on YouTube or on Facebook. I want to hear what he says. 
Man, didn't he preach an awesome message? Ah, man. And then the person goes on, and maybe even that prophet goes on in their wickedness. Without the, the love of God, without the compassion of God, that prophet gleefully pro proclaiming the judgment of God on this wicked land. Ezekiel didn't even do that. Ezekiel always said, look, God wants you to repent and turn from your sin. So he will not judge the land. That's the message of God. That's the heart of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. Hallelujah. And people need to be start. They, they need to start uh, giving that message. If the judgment of God does come, it's because the church will not bend its knees. It's because the church won't repent. It's because the so-called prophets that are prophesying gloom and doom on this world, it's because they don't have the heart of God. Though I prophesy and have all knowledge, but have not love, it's nothing. God, help us. God says, God says that the reason that he brings his, his chastisement upon his people is so that the house of Israel may go no more, go astray from me, neither be polluted no more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, says the Lord God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 14, 11. He declares that, that through these events, he uses them to get his people's attention. And if he, they don't repent, then his judgment comes. Let me just read a little bit about what his judgment is like. Son of man, when the Lord, when the land sins against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and I'll break the staff of the bread thereof and I will send famine upon it and I will cut off man and beast from it. And though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord God. But they can't help anybody else. He says, If I cause noisome beasts like locusts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beasts, Though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Though if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that it cut off, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my army upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls." by their own righteousness. If for thus says the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence to cut off from it man or beast. Yet behold, even then, he says, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, you, who went through that terrible judgment. And you shall see their way in their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when you shall see their ways in their doings. And you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, says the Lord your God. But remember, this is... This exhortation comes after, 
after God says, you know what? I'm bringing these things on the people of God if I need to, so that the house of Israel may no more go away from me, neither be polluted anymore with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, says the Lord your God. You know, the prophets out there aren't weeping for our nation. They want to see it destroyed. They call it Babylon. They call it uh, uh, just wickedness or whatever. The, the priests aren't weeping for our nation. They're wanting to see it destroyed. The people, the people, the, the YouTubers and the Facebookers who profess the name of Jesus Christ don't want to see our country prosper. They want to see it fall. They, they curse the president. When the Bible says we should be praying for the president, they, 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 they bring accusations against this and that and the other thing when they should be on their knees and turning to God. They point fingers and they say, that person, that person, look at what they do. When they should be pointing their fingers at themselves and saying, God, I need to repent. I need to get right. God, have mercy on this land. Hallelujah. So I blew the trumpet. I blew the trumpet as a warning. You know what? Uh, the judgment of God can come at any time. It can. But I believe at this present time, God is just knocking at the door of his people and he's saying, people, wake up. Return to me. People, don't go astray from me. People, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Love me with all of your heart. Hallelujah. That's what God wants. And he's finding us lacking in America. And it's time to step up. And it's time to be a people of God. I love you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Hallelujah.